Nucleic acids are large molecular structures known as biopolymers that form the essential components of life. They are split into two types, deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, and ribonucleic acid, RNA. Every living thing on our planet is DNA-based, with the exception of viruses, which can be RNA-based. And some argue that viruses aren't living at all. So what are the roles of DNA and RNA? How are they different? And how do they interact? Both can be broken down into smaller sections called nucleotides, consisting of a phosphate, a sugar, and a base. The sugar separates the type of nucleic acid being either deoxyribose or ribose. In DNA, the base can be one of four different types, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, which codes the genetic information a bit like a four-letter alphabet. In RNA, thymine is replaced by uracil. Each base has a singular opposing base to which it can bond, creating what is known as a base pair. Adenine always pairs with thymine or uracil, and cytosine always pairs with guanine. In DNA, base pairs form two complete opposing strands in a twisted ladder known as a double helix. RNA typically exists as a single strand, sometimes bonding with itself to create more stable structures. A living organism's entire DNA is called its genome. For humans, this consists of 3.2 billion base pairs. A person's entire genome is encoded in every cell of their body. It's split across 23 pairs of chromosomes, which exist in the nucleus of the cell. Sections of the DNA code for specific traits, such as height, eye color, and blood type. These coding sections are called genes. They're switched on or off, depending on the type of cell. If they're switched on, they inform the cell's ribosomes to produce proteins, which help provide that specific trait or function. This is achieved with an RNA strand called messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is the crucial link in understanding how viruses hijack cells, replicate, and then transmit. So what are viruses? Viruses are simple structures consisting of a small viral genome of either DNA or RNA, protected by a structural protein. They're also very old. Computational biology has shown that a retrovirus existed 450 million years ago in the Ordovician period, where life existed only in the oceans with mollusks and early forms of fish. There's also a widely accepted theory that RNA viruses predate DNA-based living organisms, known as the RNA world hypothesis. All living things can be infected by viruses. They hijack cells, insert their genetic payload, and try to replicate. In some cases, this can permanently alter the DNA of the species they have infected. A study of the human genome found that approximately 8% is LTR retrotransposins. These are the remnants of viruses in our DNA that were passed down to us before we were Homo sapiens. Although some can be beneficial, viruses are often spoken about and understood as pathogenic or disease-causing. Most pathogenic viruses that emerge to attack human cells are RNA-based. This includes Ebola, HIV, influenza, and coronavirus. The average RNA virus is 11,000 bases in comparison to the 3.2 billion in human DNA but they can cause huge amounts of damage. The reason RNA viruses cannot get much larger is because the enzyme that transcribes RNA for replication, called RNA polymerase, makes a huge amount of mistakes that never get corrected. So larger complex RNA viruses mutate too much to survive, whilst smaller RNA viruses are constantly mutating. RNA polymerase transcribes viral RNA to produce messenger RNA. This takes us back into the cell and where RNA viruses hijack DNA processes. The new messenger RNA from the virus goes to the ribosome, instructing it to produce replications. This repeats with more ribosomes being hijacked until the cell is full of virus replications, causing it to burst and die, releasing the virus to infect more cells. 
DNA and RNA have a very close symbiotic relationship, which can be incredibly deadly in a very specific set of circumstances. As with life, what is fascinating is how immensely unlikely those circumstances are, that an RNA virus, which has no intentions or motive, can mutate to just the right genetic formula to enter a human host, alter its DNA, replicate, and then transmit to infect another human host, and for that to happen at just the right moment. But it's a case of probability. The chances of this happening and a new virus emerging is increased as humans continue to push back the natural world, populating every corner of the earth and moving more freely with air travel. They are both increasing their exposure to new viruses from wild animals and the risk of transmission between other humans. Without proper planning and containment strategies, including buffer zones between wild and domestic animals, the chances of a new virus emerging and taking hold in human populations, potentially causing the next deadly pandemic, is a case of when, not if.